Hello, welcome to the introduction to proofs video for countability of the rationals. My name is Professor Michael Polyuk. The learning objectives for this video are use Kander Schroeder Bernstein to show that some sets are countable. Our motivation is that we want to prove that the integers cross the naturals and the rationals are countable sets. That's the big idea for today. And we're going to use the Kander Schroeder Bernstein theorem to do this. There are other ways of doing this without it. So let's build up our theorem as follows. Let's show that the cardinality of the naturals is less than or equal to the cardinality of the integers is less than or equal to the cardinality of the rationals. Two, we'll show that the cardinality of the rationals is less than or equal to that product. And then third, we'll show that that product is, has cardinality less than or equal to the naturals. So each of these three will be a different argument. The first two will be quote unquote easy, and the third one will require an interesting idea. But let's take a moment to think about once we've actually shown that this is true, what will we have proved? Well, once we prove all three of these things, by the Cantor Schroeder Bernstein theorem, we'll have shown that all of these sets have the same cardinality, and in particular, the same cardinality as the naturals, so they're all countable. You should review the Cantor Schroeder Bernstein theorem or the statement of it if you don't believe this. So now let's prove the first two relatively quickly. The first one is just because these are all ordered by subsets. The second one is more interesting. So what we need to come up with is an injection from the rationals to this uh, product. So given a rational, how do you get two pieces of information from it, an integer and a natural? Well, when I say it like that, maybe it's a bit easier to see what the function should do. Consider the function from the rationals to this product that outputs the pair uh, denominator and, sorry, numerator and denominator. And we have to be a little bit careful. We have to specify that the input has to be in lowest terms. Otherwise, that wouldn't be a function you'd have lots of different outputs for one half. Like one half could go to one, two, or two, four, or three, six, or something. But if we specify that it's in lowest terms, then that'll be an honest to goodness function. You should check for yourself that this is an injection. Now we get to the most interesting argument, which is why is this product uh, have cardinality less than or equal to the naturals? And before we do that, we should notice that in a sense, it felt like these sets were getting bigger. So they felt like they were getting bigger. But now, this one feels bigger than the naturals. So this is going to be the most interesting argument because we're going from something that feels big to something that feels small. Now, we're not gonna provide a formal proof for this, mostly because a formal proof doesn't really help us understand why, but we will use a, a list of the elements and that will help us understand uh, what exactly is happening in this proof and why exactly this set is countable. So we're gonna come up with a list where nothing is repeated and everything gets hit. So I apologize, I actually did a, a bad picture. Um, I rotated everything. So this is actually a picture of the naturals cross the integers, but I mean the integers cross the naturals. It's the same argument. So you can imagine that this stretches up way up top and way down low here, and everything stretches off to the right. So let's try to go through this. I mean, write it down right now and pick a first element and then a second element and then a third element and a fourth element so that everything gets repeated. Sorry, everything gets uh, chosen somewhere on the list. Now, one thing you might try that doesn't work is to say, this is my first one, and then this is my second one, and then this is my third one and just keep moving off to the right. If you keep doing that, you'll slice out this big, nice x-axis, but you'll miss everything above and below. So that won't work. So what's another way of adapting this so that you do eventually hit everything? Well, as a hint, this is a spiral argument. So let's see. So we start from any point you want, really, and then you sort of fan out larger and larger pieces. 
So what this means is that this is going to be the first element of my list, this is going to be the second, then the third, then the fourth, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and then we'll keep going and it'll get bigger and bigger sort of rings. So you should think to yourself, is any um, point in this product repeated on the list? Does it show up on the list twice? No, because the things don't cross. And you should also think to yourself, does everything get hit eventually? Does everything get on the lists at some point? And the answer to this one is yes. So this is not a formal proof, but it gives us a, the idea of what's happening here. And if you wanted to, you could write this out as a formal function, like first, like move forward, then left, then left, then forward, then right, right, and then down a certain amount. And then like, you could give all of the instructions to do it. And then you could formally check that but I'm not sure that that would give you um, more understanding uh, or convince you more that it's true. I think that this picture is somewhat convincing. If you want, as an exercise, write out all of these instructions to move through here. Okay, now to get a better sense of this spiral argument, adapt it to prove that the following sets are countable. The naturals cross the naturals. The integers cross the integers. The naturals cross the naturals cross the naturals, so all triples of uh, natural numbers. And then once you can do that, then prove that the uh, 2020 um, product, the 2020 dimensional uh, lattice, uh, is also countable. This one sounds fancy, but if you can do number three, then you can do four. And if you can do one, you can do three. All right, let's take a moment to reflect. How is the cantor schroeder bernstein theorem used in showing that the rationals is a countable set? Can you prove it without using the cantor schroeder bernstein theorem? Can the spiral argument be made to a formal proof? Thank you very much and have a great day.